video, can you eat meat and still be able to lower your creatinine? And also, how much protein should you eat exactly to improve your kidney health? And also, can eating protein really cause a spike in blood sugar levels? Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and a researcher in the field of kidney health. And my main focus here on this channel, Double O Kidney, is to help you guys improve your kidney function and recover from kidney disease. But you really cannot talk about kidney health without talking about protein. And we know today that if your goal is avoiding dialysis and protecting your kidneys, decreasing protein intake is the very first step, both in people with or without diabetes, as we can see. And yet, protein seems to be one of those things a lot of CKD and diabetes patients still get wrong today. Which is a problem because, I mean, you end up in dialysis if you make mistakes with protein intake. In fact, today I will also show you what is the number one most dangerous mistake CKD patients make with protein. So don't miss that part. But there are more questions about protein intake and kidney health that need an answer. So let's answer the question that everyone's asking. How much protein do you need to eat exactly in order to improve your kidney function? Well, this is a very specific question, but the answer is a simple one. If your goal is to improve your kidney function, you need a lot less protein than you think. Because while you don't need to limit protein intake up to stage 2 CKD, people with kidney disease stage 3 or higher will want to consume a very small amount of protein, as low as 0.55 grams of protein per kilogram of ideal body weight. And to make an approximation of what this could mean in real life, consider that a diet this low in protein means that you can't even eat all the pasta, bread, and pizza most people are used to eat every day. No, that's not because these foods are unhealthy. It's because they contain too much protein for the kidneys of most CKD patients. Yes, protein is not only present in, you know, meat, fish, dairy, eggs, and legumes. Even grains and many other plant-based foods contain some of it. And while that may sound scary at first, it's actually good news. It means that you should stop worrying about not getting enough protein because that's almost impossible. But on the other hand, getting too much protein and doing serious damage to your precious kidneys is really easy. So question, how does protein damage the kidneys? Well, because the kidneys are the organs tasked with removing the scores the metabolism of protein creates. As you probably already know, protein is an essential nutrient. You cannot live without it because the body needs protein for repairing itself. But again, most people eat way too much protein. Meat and poultry, eggs and dairy products, all this protein needs to be broken down into the amino acids the body can use to repair itself. And this produces an awful lot of metabolic waste, primarily urea. And this is going to cause a condition known as glomerular hyperfiltration where the rate at which blood is filtered through the kidneys glomerule increases. And of course, animal protein metabolism is also going to cause a lot of acid to be created inside the body, which is also something your kidneys need to take care of. Yeah, more work to do. Not to mention that animal-based protein is also linked to increased risk of kidney stones. Because of the huge amount of phosphorus animal-based foods contain, they will use all the calcium the body has, included the calcium in your bones. And this is also bad because without calcium, you get kidney stones. And yet your body needs protein for self-repair, or better, the amino acids protein contain. So at this point, what many people ask is, why can't we just take amino acids instead of eating protein? Well, the thing is, you actually can. This has actually been done, not just in experimental science, but in the treatment of regular CKD patients as well. So there is a lot of scientific evidence to support the use of a diet that is both low in protein and supported with the use of special amino acids. Actually, there is one very recent study about this topic that's interesting for us because what they found out is incredible. 
So what they did in this study that was done on huge number of test subjects, by the way, was comparing a regular low protein diet with a diet that was also supported by the use of special amino acids. And this is what happened. So what are we looking at here? There are two lines, a black one and a gray one. The black line is CKD patients taking these special amino acids. Gray one is CKD patients not taking them. And when the line goes down, it means that an increasing number of patients has lost more than 5 points of GFR or had to start dialysis. So this study very clearly tells us that these special amino acids can seriously delay dialysis and protect your kidneys, but only if used in combination with a low protein diet. And guys, there are various brands that sell these special amino acids for kidney disease patients. But this is not something you can just buy on Amazon or other supplement stores. It's something you need a prescription to get. So if you want to know more about this topic, please let me know in the comment section below and I will talk about this in one of my next videos. Now guys, whenever I talk about this topic in my videos, I always get the same kind of comment. Catherine, you say protein is bad, but that other video I just watched says that red meat is a panacea that cures everything. Who is right? And most importantly, can you eat red meat and still improve your kidney health? So a lot of influencers and various snake oil salesmen these days are pushing the carnivore diet as the panacea for everything. If you look at Google Trends, you can immediately see that the word carnivore had a huge breakout in searches in the last few months. This is the fad diet of the moment and everyone on the web went from being a keto influencer to be a carnivore influencer. Because you see, the keto was becoming stale. People were starting to notice that they couldn't do that diet for a long time. It was very bad for their overall health. And as soon as they went back to their usual way of eating, they were gaining back all the weight they lost and some more. But how is this possible? How can the keto be so bad for people? It cannot be all the meat and the butter and the bacon and the fat, right? No, it must be the veggies. Uh, both myself and hundreds of low-carb doctors and dietitians and other healthcare providers have seen multiple examples of how a very, very low-carb or ketogenic diet or even a carnivore diet can improve wait, wait, wait. function. What? Or this is what these influencers are saying, at least. And this is why all the influencers are carnivores now. But this also came with an issue for them because you see, everyone knows that excess protein intake is bad for the kidneys, especially from red meat. So they had to do something about it and they did exactly what you would expect from a snake oil salesman. They started to lie, like their life depended on it. You can eat as much animal protein as you want and you're never going to harm your kidney function. And guys, as usual, if you don't believe what every single doctor and researcher in the field of nephrology says about protein, well, let me know down in the comment section because I've seen various YouTube videos and comments about people who reversed kidney disease by eating only red meat. And yet, not even once in human history, this incredible feat was achieved in a controlled setting. There is not a single study in which someone with CKD improved their kidney function by eating meat. But hey, if you do not agree with this, let me know why in the comment section and maybe I can talk about it in my next videos. In fact, today I also want to answer some questions about protein you guys ask in the comment section. Ken Barry says protein does not harm the kidneys. How dare he or he is right? So who is right? The whole scientific community and the medical world or Ken Barry, an influencer that spends most of his time selling red meat and Table salt on YouTube? Yeah, he actually does sell table salt. Check this out. It's unbelievable. However, he is adamant that protein is good for his kidneys. But is he right? Well, he doesn't actually mean what you think. Protein does not harm the kidney in healthy people. Even excess protein intake is still not solidly linked to kidney damage in healthy people. 
Evidence is very mixed about that. Now, this is only true for the people without kidney disease. In fact, as soon as the kidneys lose enough filtrating ability, like in CKD, protein intake is guaranteed to damage your kidneys. Imagine for a moment that your kidney is like a muscle. If the muscles in your leg are in a good shape, you can run, you can jump, you can sprint without a problem. But if one of your tendons is strained, even a misstep, will make the injury worse, okay? You are never going to be able to recover if you don't get enough rest. It is the exact same situation with your kidneys and protein. So just like you need to stop running with an injured leg, you also need to give your kidney some rest from protein. And guys, please notice how I'm not selling you any vegan pill or vegan table salt here. I can absolutely tell you that in the general population, evidence of meat intake causing kidney damage is mixed. Some studies say it's bad, some say it's not. I can say that without any problems, but if you listen to Ken Berry and the other millions of carnivore influencers, they will only tell you about those studies that prove that red meat is good for you. Or if they even mention studies that do not support their agenda, they will do that just to tell you that these studies are biased or that they are lying. And another very important issue these influencers always fail to mention when they tell you that protein is good for you is that a lot of people have CKD without knowing it. And I mean a lot. It's believed that 90% of people with CKD don't know they have it. And we are talking about almost 1 in 7 adults in the US. This is why the carnivore diet is possibly the fastest way there is to dialysis. And also stop buying table salt from YouTube influencers, please. Okay, but what about diabetes, you may ask? Should we also decrease protein intake with diabetes? Now guys, when it comes to diabetes, things get more complicated because, well, if you have diabetes, your kidneys are not any different from those of a person without diabetes, alright? Protein metabolism will still damage them. But while someone without diabetes can eat almost all of their calories from carbs and fats only, well, if you have diabetes, you also need to limit carb intake. So a non-diabetic CKD patient may eat as close to zero protein a day as possible and take a supplement of special amino acids to avoid malnutrition. But while this could also work for those with diabetes, most diabetes patients find it easier to eat enough protein not to really do much on carbs. But we are still talking about low protein here, right? And what I would recommend to people with diabetes is to make sure all of their protein is coming from plant based sources. This is very important. With diabetes, you need not just to limit protein intake, but also to replace all the animal-based protein you may still be eating with plant-based protein, alright? Why you may ask? To answer this question, I will directly quote the most recent scientific literature. As we can read, switching animal proteins to vegetable proteins may decrease renal hyperfiltration proteinuria and ideally, in the long term, the risk of developing or worsening renal failure. What this review points out is that plant-based protein creates less waste product than animal-based protein and this reduces renal hyperfiltration which is a way to say that the kidneys have to work less and they will last longer. We also know today that protein-rich foods are actually going to make blood glucose management much more complex because they do cause your fasting glucose to raise. And that's a lot worse than a glucose spike, by the way, because it's persistent issue, not a one-time only issue. So protein-rich foods, red meat in particular, are very bad for people with diabetes as they are linked not just to an increased risk for diabetes but also higher fasting glucose. Yes, as you can see, this very, very large study conducted in the US on 216,695 participants confirmed very recently that if your goal is improving your diabetes status, red meat is something you absolutely want to stay away from. So if you have diabetes and CKD and you want to improve, only eat plant-based protein and in a limited amount. Yes, this is what the plant-based diet for CKD is all about and it works as we have seen. And now you may ask, if the plant-based diet works, why are people still scared of eating only plant-based foods? 
Well, not everyone is scared in my experience. This is especially a problem with men in particular. And I've discussed this with a friend of mine that's a sociologist that also works as mental health counselor. And his answer to this question really surprised me. So, why are men always more reluctant to go on a plant-based diet? A lot simply boils down to fragile masculinity. Certain men experience a perceived inadequacy, prompting them to overcompensate. This is why they try to embody stereotypical traits associated with traditional masculinity, such as mostly eating meat. The concept of fragile masculinity suggests that these men are constantly worried that they will lose their manly status. This is why they are compelled to assert and reaffirm their masculinity continually. So yeah, it's clear at this point that for a certain type of person, this can be a huge problem. I mean, it's funny to be the one that only eats steak in a social setting, right? Like a real caveman. And I don't have a problem with that, of course, unless, unless that becomes the reason why people are going to eventually lose their health. Is playing the role of what they perceive as a real man really worth ending up in dialysis? On the other hand, if you are a man and you have started a plant-based diet, congratulations! Because it means your masculinity is rock solid because you don't have to prove anything to anyone and you are also protecting your kidneys. So time now to see what is the number one most dangerous mistake people do with protein intake. This is something I often see patients in all the stages doing and it worries me. Many people I've talked to think they are eating too little protein because maybe they were used to eat much more before they were diagnosed with CKD. So they are worried, they think that maybe their bodies cannot do well with so little protein. And yet malnutrition, which is what happens when your protein intake is actually too low, almost only happens in very elderly, very ill patients that almost cannot eat at all. So yeah, if you are actually dying of starvation, go eat something now. Anything really, if you can. So if you can't, talk to your doctor because this is a serious issue. But for most CKD patients, the issue is the actual opposite of this. This is a problem so big that they actually made studies about it. What this study says is that even when they were being followed by a registered dietitian, most CKD patients ended up eating way too much protein. This is what this study calls DPI or dietary protein intake. And of course, eating too much protein with kidney disease is really bad by the way. A mistake like that could literally cost your kidneys. Now, the way the researchers in this study solved the issue is very peculiar. They actually employed something called upper tech staple foods. And if you want to learn more about what these foods are, my video up here and also down in the description is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.